everyone, pretty much everyone in the world already knows, right, that nuclear power plants can spectacularly explode and cause an insane amount of damage. But not many people are aware that coal power plants actually can and do explode as well. One just exploded not all that long ago in Australia. Since then, solar power has done something that is really worrying a lot of investors. Now, Tony Sieber mentioned this would happen. He said these moronic investors would lose billions of dollars that they were putting, pouring into coal power plants. And now that's what's happening. Coal power is not being disrupted. It's being destroyed both by itself and by solar and wind generation. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you guys. Welcome back everyone else. What a wonderful day it is. I love this stuff. You know what? This is just brilliant. Fossil fuels, you can all go to hell. I'm not interested in you. I'm not interested in sucking in your fumes. I'm not interested in the, honestly, why are these idiots investing in this stuff? I'm not interested in you investors because you can all suffer. That's what I think. You weren't smart enough to see the writing on the wall years ago. Then you're not smart enough to do what? Be a wealthy, rich person. To do that, to hold on to your money, you need to actually bother to get off your rear end and do some research. People have been doing this for you for years. Now, I'm not the only person who's been watching these channels like Rethink X and been figuring out what was about to happen. And what was that? It's about to happen in the US. It's happening right now in Australia. Coal power is dying. It's, believe it or not, I know it's hard to believe this because the media would like to tell you a completely different story. That's why you've got to come here to get the actual truth of what's really happening. Coal is not just dying. It's going extinct faster than I even thought it would. What do I mean by that? Well, here in Australia, we're the land of coal lovers. I don't know why, but here in Australia, Aussies seem to think that we need coal for our economy. It's ridiculous, right? The truth is we do not. In fact, we're much better off without it. And solar power just hit 60% of generation in Australia for a short period of time, but it hit 60% last week and it's only going to increase from here because you know what? That's not even our summer. We're not even in this summer here in Australia. And Australia is one of the sunniest countries on the planet. Now, even though we mine a boatload of coal and use it here in Australia and send it off to other countries, the reality is we will have no use for it very soon. We simply won't. You know why? Because every power generation company in Australia is saying there'll be no more coal as of 2035. And they're getting pressure to do it even sooner. Now, what actually helped this transition speed up was a coal plant which dramatically exploded last year. The Calide Coal Fired Power Station in central Queensland is now completely offline following a series of malfunctions at the plant. Sears Energy says a structural failure at a cooling plant sent a unit of Calide C offline on Monday. Now this is after it blew up last year. They fixed it, blowing up again. It's useless. Now the funny thing is this is what the coal power plant said. That's kind of what I would consider normal operating practice. This is a direct quote. It's just bad timing in terms of the other things that have occurred at Calide. And that's probably the same kind of comments that, you know, the biggest coal mining company in the US made when they went bankrupt. Of, what was it? About a year ago? Two years ago? Do you remember that? They went bankrupt, the biggest company? The biggest coal company in the US? Yeah, similar kinds of comments. Now, this incident lands a fresh blow for fossil fuels and for the coal plant, which was the scene of a dramatic explosion last year that took out the C4 unit and cut power from nearly half a million customers through the state. After that, what do you think happened? What do you think those a lot of those customers did? Well, they were like, hmm, hang on a minute. We're living in Queensland. Uh, there's more sun than pretty much anywhere else on the planet. Why don't we just get solar because it's insanely cheap in Australia. It's less than half the price of what it costs in the US. Yeah, let's do that. And my friends, that's exactly what happened. Solar neared 60% of grid generation for the first time, taking a massive bite out of coal's lunch and uh, sending many investors into panic mode. I'm kind of like picturing them jumping out of buildings like what they did after the stock exchange collapsed in 1990. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't want these guys to come kill themselves, but I have no sympathy whatsoever at all. The combination of large scale and rooftop, very important, the increase in rooftop solar is massive here in Australia, set new generation records on a sunny and mild spring day on Sunday, at the same time as sending grid demand and the demand for coal down to new lows. Basically, right, coal is dying very, very fast and it's helping itself die. <laughs> it's so brilliant. The irony here, it's comical. The new records continue the story of rapidly 
changing grids all around the world. High levels of renewable penetration will continue to grow with dozens of gigawatts of new wind, solar, and storage capacity to be added in coming years. They also tell the story of the future, the future of the world, a world that's changing in ways that the fossil fuel industry is fighting their hardest to prevent. It doesn't matter what they do, it's not going to work. On Sunday, around 10.50 a.m., Big and small solar combined to set two new records for the share of total generation in Australia, leaping to 60%, easily beating the 57% level reached the previous day. Right? This isn't a once-off. This will continue to grow and grow and grow. The thing is, the entire country of Australia wasn't sunny on that day. Imagine if it was. Imagine if the entire country was sunny on that day. We would have hit maybe 65%. Imagine where we'll be in only a few more years. Even in New South Wales, with the country's biggest coal fleet of more than 10 gigawatts, the share of large scale and rooftop PV reached a record of 63% at 11.15 a.m., beating the 62% reached previously. Coal generation in New South Wales slipped to less than three gigawatts, just one third of total generation at the time, and less than 30% of its capacity. Only a couple of years ago, people were saying Australians were a nation of drug addicted addicts. And they said this like, you know, we were addicted, like coal was our form of crack cocaine. To be fair, they kind of had a point. Australians were arguing about it, saying coal, without coal, you know, the, the country, the nation of Australia, as we know it, it's not going to exist. It's going to be decimated. Well, yeah, it's changing pretty quickly. We're not being decimated. You're all getting by. It's okay. The reduced dependence on coal was highlighted by a slump in overall demand to a new record low of 11.9 gigawatts across the whole of the national electricity market, which encompasses the eastern states, including Tasmania and South Australia. That new low set a five-minute period, easily beating the previous low of 12.5 gigawatts recorded in mid-September. Now, keep in mind, when coal power plants uh, don't operate at maximum production, which is 100%, when they go to below 80%, they make a loss. Coal power plants now in many countries around the world are making losses routinely. It's becoming the norm. How long can they stay open? under those conditions. Yeah, probably not that long. The Australian energy market operator confirmed the new record low, saying demand hit a new minimum of 12 gigawatts, almost 5.5% from the previous record set on September the 25th. So the truth is here, right, in Australia, demand for electricity isn't going up. And what, what, we're getting all these EVs on the grid, right? What, why, well, what's going on? Why isn't the grid shutting itself down? Why, why isn't demand going through the roof? All the electricity we need to run these EVs. It should be just killing our energy market, right? It's not. Guess what? The French Prime Minister said the same thing. The French Minister for the Economy said the same thing. Having EVs on the grid doesn't decimate the grid. Now, this low is even more impressive given it is calculated over a 30-minute period rather than five-minute intervals. And the incredible thing is that renewable generation actually hit 67% on that day. And of that, 45% was actually roof top solar. Aussies are starting to generate their own electricity. So this whole narrative, this whole false narrative of oh, your EVs are just burning up coal, it's nonsense. Because in Australia, the average person with an electric car has their own energy. They're making it from the sun. We need to use, that needs to be part of this discussion. We need to accept the reality that many people with electric cars, in fact, a very large percentage, create and generate their own electricity using their own solar and often using their own batteries as well. So what's this doing? Well, it's complicating life for coal generators and it's brought prices down in the middle of the day, which is very strange. This used to be the time that coal generators ate a big fat lunch, made lots of money. But that lunch is, well, not getting eaten anymore because it doesn't exist. And it's unimpeded by competing technologies from the sun. And because in the past it was unimpeded from solar, uh, it was just charging Aussies a whole lot more money. Now think about this, right? If you think I'm wrong, there's only one state in Australia that hasn't increased the cost of electricity recently at all. In fact, in the past two years. That state uses 100% renewable energy, Canberra. And that's what will happen when we all have renewable energy. The prices won't go up, in fact, they'll go down. Growth of solar has put the coal sector on rations in the middle of the day, and the coal industry has had to focus its profit making in the evening peaks and other times when it has less competition. Of course, AEMO expects the grid to experience moments when renewables account for 100% of grid demand, which means that the lunch for coal generators will be taken completely off the table or a lot of storage and green hydrogen production will be needed. But what will happen? All that will happen as a result of that is more renewable 
will be built, which is why many energy analysts find it hard to imagine that coal-fired generators will survive even beyond 2032 in Australia and across many countries around the world. Despite the lights will go out scare campaigns by electricity companies who say, well, if we don't keep using coal, then you won't have any power. Well, that is completely and utterly false. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But keep in mind, the world, my friends, is getting better. Here's how, here's just one of many ways that we're leaving a better world behind for our children. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.